Well in tonight's video I've got news of two brand new videos that have just been uploaded. One delves into the underwater world just to kind of have a look at some of our rigs actually work underneath the water. The other video has been extremely well shot, it's almost a Hollywood production. It's on a fantastic Northern Yorkshire venue, one that a lot of you won't have heard of so you'll be interested to see that because I know a lot of you have been asking about it. I've also got five feeder hacks five little shortcuts that I know a lot of people ask me about just about making your fishing a lot more efficient and a lot more enjoyable so this is this week's Thursday night vlog Well I know a lot of you aren't on social media and not quite as well connected as what some some of the people are that I mix with. So firstly just a couple of bits of news for you. One is um, Lawford Lakes. I've been asked to give it a quick mention that Lawford Lakes are going to be running um, some silverfish matches through the winter. I'll put the link directly underneath this video to their website where they advertise all their matches. It'll tell you how you can book on and obviously it gives you the results as well from previous matches. A lot of people know I've spent quite a bit of time at Larford Lakes, it's a fantastic fishery. Um, the only downside for it for me is it's a little bit too far away to travel down there every weekend. Um, but I have done quite a lot of videos there, I'll put a link above for you just so you can check out what the venue is all about if you've never seen it. But let's face it, fishing for silverfish is uh, very very popular through the winter months because obviously it usually ensures you a few bites instead of waiting for carp that can be unpredictable at best. So if anybody's interested in fishing the silverfish matches there on that very popular and very well established fishery just check out the link directly underneath this video and that'll tell you how you can book on. Another big deal on social media this week was something that I couldn't really go without mentioning tonight and that's Lee Wright. Lee Wright is a fellow Matrix consultant, he fishes for um, Trentman and I just want to say massive congratulations to him for winning the Riverfest final. From all accounts, I wasn't there myself, but I heard it was a fantastic performance, mate, over the two days. It's a two-day competition, and it's done on weight for the people that aren't aware of it. And, you know, the event was covered by um, Tom Scully's Catch More Media, so if anyone wants to check that out, then obviously go to their YouTube channel or their Facebook page. But uh, I just want to say a massive congratulations, Lee. £13,000 richer as well, which is obviously nothing to be sniffed at. But it's very rare I see you Lee, but I just want to say a massive congratulations mate, I heard it was an absolute superb performance. Well I couldn't upload this video tonight without mentioning the sad news that John Wilson had died at his home in Thailand this week. 75 years old, um, from what I've read he, he had a stroke and I don't think there are many people that are watching this video now and all the other videos that are online now um, who weren't touched by him in some way through it, just his love and his enthusiasm for fishing. The brilliant thing about the films and the programs they used to make was just it was just about the fishing you know it wasn't about um, learning a, a venue it wasn't match orientated and it certainly wasn't from a sales point of view where he was pushing tackle all the time it, it wasn't about that it was about bringing fishing to the masses and you know I feel a little bit of a connection to some of those films obviously through all the videos I've produced that you know most of what we do should be about the love for the sport and I think you know the programs that he brought to the masses through television um, really you know entertained not only anglers but people that didn't go fishing as well so John if you're looking down on us thank you very much for just kind of giving us that passion for this fantastic sport well let's face it as anglers one of the fascinating things that we're constantly discussing all the time is how fish react to our rigs and our bait underneath the water. That's one of the things that we don't see when we're fishing, whether it's a match or a pleasure session, it doesn't matter. We cannot see really what's happening out there underneath the water. It's a question that I get asked all the time about rigs, about how they perform under the water and what I think is happening when you move the feeder, when you cast out, what happens if you put a longer hook length on and all that sort of stuff. Tonight I'm bringing you news that I know some of you will have seen this already, it's been uploaded um, a few days now. Matrix Submerged. A lot of you know that I was out filming some underwater footage with Rob Hughes and here is a quick snippet from that film.
Well, hello and a big warm welcome to Matrix Submerged. What on earth does that mean? Well, it means exactly what it says on the tin. This is Matrix and we are going below the surface underwater to find out all sorts of things about how your rigs behave, about how fish behave, about how feed behaves. We're going to bust some myths and we're going to give you loads and loads of tips about how to catch more fish. lovely bite and it's just locked up. <laughs> I might have. Oh yeah, yeah I am. <laughs> From my position I could see the feeder hit the surface and I managed to capture the fall of the feeder perfectly. Although I don't think even I was ready for what would happen next. I find it hard to believe that there are many anglers out there that aren't intrigued to watch that film about how rigs perform underneath the water and that sort of thing. Um, even if it's not for your own knowledge, it's just to kind of solve a few curiosities that you might have. If anyone's interested and you haven't seen it already, I'll put a link directly underneath this video to that film and I'll also put a link at the end of this video that will take you straight to that film. Now I still get sent in loads and loads of questions, I understand that there are so many anglers out there that are just coming into the sport or they've been out of the sport for a long time and they want to kind of have a quick catch up on where we're at with rigs and, and the venues that we fish today because obviously over the years venues and trends have changed and certainly so are the tackle. Tonight I've put together five hacks, five feeder hacks for you that just kind of gives you a few shortcuts and a few little um, tips that I use just to make my feeder fishing a lot more simple. The first hack tonight is about when you're fishing with duplicate setups. Sometimes we find ourselves fishing with identical rods that have got identical reels on. Sometimes I might have up to three on a roost next to me where all three rods are the same and all three reels are the same. But each, each rod is actually clipped up on a different line or a different range and it's quite easy, especially in the haste of a match when you're rushing, you're trying to be quick and efficient. It's quite easy to sometimes forget which one is clipped up on which line. A quick way around that is just getting a piece of pole elastic, just an old piece of pole elastic, tie a loop in it and then just put that over the butt of the rod that is clipped up on the shortest line. It really is that simple for me. That's all I do because then I know when I look down I can quickly pick up the rod that is clipped up on the shortest range. You can go one step further than that, you can even colour coordinate or colour code the pole elastics if you wish. So you could have a pink one for example on the short line if you've got a middle range line that could be say green elastic and obviously the longest rod you can just leave that without anything on. It just makes everything a lot quicker, a lot simpler and it just helps avoid make mistakes. Tip number two is hook lengths. Now let's face it, a lot of us, especially when we're fishing matches, we tend to carry a lot of hook lengths and if you're like me, sometimes you might not feel as though you actually need loads of hook lengths but it's just good to have them with you just so you're more prepared it's peace of mind that you're covered for most eventualities one of the questions I get asked obviously there's loads of different ways of carrying your hook lens this is how I carry mine one of the questions I get asked is do you actually go out and tie up three different lengths of hook length for each permutation um, before a match by that they basically mean that if you want some hooks that are set up say some hooks that are size 16s 14s um, and 12s and they all need to be on different diameters. Do you actually go out and, and you know, at home prepare a hook length for every eventuality? To be fair, no, sometimes I don't. I have built up a nice collection now, but that's just purely because I've been doing it so many years. I just constantly keep doing them, and obviously you don't use all the ones that you make up every time you go out, so you do gradually build up a collection. The easiest thing I learned what to do when time was um, quite rare was just tie them all up one meter, simple as that. I've had a very, very rarely fish a hook length longer than one meter when I'm fishing in this country. So all I do then is I tie them all up one meter so that I know that's going to be the maximum length I'm going to use. And then all I do is, depending on your setup, it depends, I know everyone's got different seat boxes, everyone's got different side trays, different feeder arms, whatever. But just have a look at your setup and all I do is get a tape measure. When you're set up on your box, 50 centimeters, okay and just mark that on your side tray or on your feeder arm or some some tray or whatever you've got that's near you 
so that you know that when you take that one meter hook length out if you think well no 50 centimeters is going to be better today you can quickly just lay it next to your tray snip it just tie the loop and away you go it just means that you haven't got hundreds of different spools in your box if time is an issue like i say if time isn't an issue I strongly always recommend be you know as prepared as what you possibly can be but I understand that sometimes that's not an option so if you do that they're all one meter and then you can just cut it down accordingly tip number three let's face it if you've got a number of reels like I'm sure a lot of you will have because I know a lot of you are feeder anglers and and so you like to especially if you've got duplicate setups you might have two three spools for each reel it's quite easy to forget um, which strength line is on which spool obviously with braid it's dead easy to tell that it's braid and not mono so that's not such a, a big issue unless you've got different diameters of braid but mono that can be you know sometimes you might be carrying a six pound um, reel line for example you also might have some set up with eight and it might be stronger than that if you're fishing on rivers for barbel or snaggy swims or whatever you might have spools with even stronger lines on one of the questions I've been asked a few times is how can I actually tell without making mistakes which thickness line is on each spool all I do is get a piece of masking tape, write on it the pound in, in strength or in diameter, whichever works best for you. You could even write the manufacturer or the brand of line on there if you're using different brands. All I do then is just snip that off and then lay that on the inside of the spool. And I've had labels on the inside of my spools like this for years. Um, it never comes off and it's out of the way, it's nice and neat, doesn't get wet and it just means you know if you're ever in doubt about what line you're actually going to be putting onto that reel you can quickly have a quick look at exactly what it is and then it just stops you making any sort of mistakes another tip for your feeder tips if you've got multiple rods a lot of rods come with two tips or three tips which i think is fantastic value for money obviously you need a tube or something to carry them in if you're going on different venues different conditions you need to carry a selection of tips in case it needs changing when you get to the bank I obviously use the Matrix one, which is incredibly tough. And what I see is, I see a lot of people just carrying the tips in here, and sometimes they, I've actually heard people say it on the bank, they've put a tip in, start fishing, and then they realize they've selected the wrong tip. Because they've been so quick and keen and eager to get fishing, or they've been short of time to set up before the match, they've gone and put the wrong tip on by mistake. I see a lot of people carrying the tips that way, if I don't knock everything over in the process. That way, so all the color, tips are actually facing down or the outer side that's great if you know exactly what those colors mean as regards the strength of the tip I totally appreciate it and I was there years and years and years myself where I was using rods from different manufacturers and different manufacturers and different brands have got their own coding system as regard colors so when you're looking for to change a tip quickly and easily it's easy to pick the wrong one so all I do even though these are all matrix tips all I do is reverse those tips so all I do is put them in that way so that then exposes all the printed labels that tell you exactly how strong each tip is it doesn't matter what color it is you can quickly look at that these are all marked up what the strength of the tip is and that makes it a lot quicker a lot easier and it just helps avoid mistakes and the final tip for tonight the final hack for you is about I've been asked this question a few times and it's about when you're fishing at kind of medium to long range on deep venues now I totally appreciate that a lot of these venues um, sometimes you don't have to cast a long way but because they're such open and vast and wild venues sometimes the wind can be horrendous and even if you're fishing at say 40 or 50 meters even hitting that range can be quite difficult if the wind is bad the question that I've been asked is in those conditions a lot of people will switch to horizon type feeders like our horizon feeder which are fantastic for cutting through the wind they will help you achieve um, obviously a little bit further range as well because it cuts through the wind but it also helps with accuracy as well the question I've been asked is what happens if you're fishing in deep water and you you know that is the only feeder that you can actually reach the range that you you want to fish their concern is the people that have asked me these questions their concern is that because it's a cage if you're fishing in deep water that by the time that feeder hits the bottom a lot of the ground bait has come out because obviously the water can get direct access to that through the cage itself there are obviously plastic feeders that you can use or solid feeders that will make sure that the feeder is intact when it reaches the bottom or it will certainly encourage that to happen but those style feeders are generally not quite as good for casting into a wind as what these are because just purely because they're, de they're designed and you know they're not designed for that sort of fishing we've got a new feeder that is very similar to that and that's the new horizon feeder 
that uh, I've been using quite a lot. I'm certainly going to be using it um, on some venues on matches that I've got coming up over the next few weeks. Now these are a little bit better for that. Obviously the design is superb for cutting into the wind and giving you that extra bit of range. And these are a little bit more, because they are um, plastic and not wire, there's obviously a lot more surface contact there for the ground bait to kind of help encourage it to stay in the feeder in those circumstances. So, I mean, I'm going to be using that feeder hell of a lot over the next few weeks, but even in extreme deep water, even a feeder like that probably wouldn't give you much, um, what's the word, much peace of mind that the feeder is going to be intact or the grommet's going to be intact when it reaches the bottom. So, how do we get around this? Well, we've got cage coats. Now, I've been using these for the last certainly two or three, well, maybe three years, I think. The great thing with cage coats is what these basically are, are sleeves that go over this style feeder and by heating them over a kettle by, with the steam, the steam actually shrinks these so that they fit tightly and snugly onto one of these feeders. And as you can see, that's a great way, it's a great combination of the two. It's a distance feeder that's going to give you um, accuracy as well, but it's going to help cut into that wind if the wind's a problem. And obviously, you've got the, um, the cage coat, which is preventing the water getting to the ground bait, which will encourage it to stay in the feeder until it hits the bottom. Well, I hope you've enjoyed those quick five feeder hacks. I've got a video on its way, it's already put together, I just need to finish editing it. It's got a lot more feeder hacks in it for you, and hopefully, um, they may not all be of interest to you, but hopefully, even if you could just pick one or two out of there that's going to help you in your fishing, hopefully you're going to enjoy that video when I upload it. The second big film I want to tell you about is the video that we shot at Lake Semmerwater. I know a lot of you have already seen it multiple times, some of you. It's been incredibly well shot. I had nothing to do with the production of it other than turning up and fishing. It was shot for the Fish Matrix um, Facebook page and uh, Fish Matrix YouTube channel and what I'll do at the end of the video I'll put a link direct to that for you but just to give you a taste of what that was like here's the trailer welcome to another matrix mini masterclass <laughs> stunning venue I'm sure you'll agree and obviously in testing conditions like that whilst it was quite a bit of a challenge making sure we could catch some fish there was ice in the puddles on the car park when we arrived there that morning we'd never seen the venue before we were soon to find it was very very shallow as well and all those things kind of put a few doubts in our mind whether we were actually going to catch any fish or not the weather obviously increased and made it a little bit more of a, a testing situation but I think that adds to um, the drama and makes it for a, an incredibly enjoyable film so if you're interested in watching that which I strongly recommend I'll put a link to that at the end of the video and I'll also put a link directly underneath for you Well, what's coming up? I haven't fished a match for two or three weeks now. Um, I've had a bit of time off. I'm working on an incredibly big project for next year that I can't tell you about at the moment, but I will tell you. It's something that's gonna impact this channel greatly. So if you're not subscribed already, hit subscribe. Um, it's gonna have a massive impact on Patreon TV as well. Massive thank you to all the patrons that are on board. I think you've all been on board now about three months, I think it is. 
Um, massively appreciate you jumping on board with that. That is allowing me to produce more videos. And if you haven't had a look at Patreon TV yet, it's basically a channel like this where you can access extra videos each month. And I'll put a link to that right at the end of this video for you in case you want to check that out. Well, my winter is now really going to revolve mainly around Hallcroft. It's the Feeder Masters Winter Pairs. It's a competition that I know a lot of you um, who watch these videos are actually competing in. And I know a lot of you followed our progress through the league last year. I'll put a quick link above for you just to give you a snippet of what it was like last year. But for those of you that didn't see it last year, here's a quick montage just to give you a taster of what to expect. fishing the competition again this year with Richard Vaughan we came pretty close last year we never had any kind of bumper catchers throughout the six match series this year it's only five matches this year it's again it's going to be done on the same format so just to quickly put you in the picture for those that might be interested in following us through this it's a five match series the series is it's done on weight so it's a cumulative weight over the five rounds it's a pairs competition obviously and it's at Holcroft fishery near Redford um, 50 centimeter feeder uh, rule applies. We're going to be using Bloodworm and Joker, I imagine, because it's getting colder now and harder. So I imagine that's what we're going to be using. And you know, it's sure to give us a few twists and turns. There are 30 pairs booked on, which means it's a sellout again this year. Quick list here for you, so you can have a quick look at who's competing. Most of these are the same anglers that competed last year, but there are some new names there as well, which will be great to see them get involved. Hopefully the weather's not going to affect it too much, but it's winter, you know, we're in it for the long haul and we know it can throw anything at us. So if you want to follow our progress through that, I'll be updating you each after each match as regards how we're getting on and what's been happening and my thoughts and all that sort of stuff and who's doing well. So if you don't want to miss that, just hit subscribe and that way you'll be kept in the loop with all our progress through the winter months. Well, I'm currently in probably the busiest month of the year for me at work in my day job. So uploads haven't been quite as often as what I would have liked, but hopefully you've enjoyed the content. And whilst the quantity hasn't been there, I certainly hope you've enjoyed the quality. If, as always, you want to see topics or give me feedback on any of these videos, then please just comment below. I want to hear about what you're up to this winter. If you can let me know what you're up to through the winter months, obviously I can tailor make some videos for you and just kind of share our experiences of, you know, just getting out on the bank as much as we possibly can, weather permitted. So thanks for watching tonight. I really appreciate it as always. Like I say, if you want to see more videos like this, just hit that subscribe button down there. That will keep you in the loop with all future videos. And if you do want to check out Patreon TV and see some extra videos that are slightly different from these, just extra videos each month, then just check out that link up there. Just hit that link and that will take you straight to it and explain to you what that's all about. 
thanks for watching tonight really appreciate it have a fantastic weekend i know i'm going to see some of you this weekend so stay safe i hope you all get out on the bank and i hope you all have a fantastic weekend thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next video